So for this week's Challenge Wednesday, we have our patient Adriana, and Adriana presents with a past medical history of multiple sclerosis and blurred vision. During cranial nerve testing, the therapist quickly shines a pen light into the patient's left eye. The patient's right eye constricts. However, the left eye remains dilated. Which of the following is the most likely present? All right, so we got A, left cranial nerve 3 impairment. B, right cranial nerve 2 impairment. C, left cranial nerve 2 impairment. And D, right cranial nerve 3 impairment impairment all right so i made sure that i said all of those the right way so that's what that's what it is there's a lot of like little opposites here that you got to play with a lot of left and right going on um you know we have to start this off and state okay what is cranial nerve three to begin with before we even start looking at this question let's let's level the playing field what is cranial nerve three can you put that down if you're in the car right now uh pull off side of the road if you need to tell me what cranial nerve three is you should be saying ocular motor, ocular motor, right? And then cranial nerve two is going to be the optic nerve. All right, so we got that. We leveled the playing field. Let's go ahead to the top of the question, start knocking this down. Adriana presents with a past medical history of multiple sclerosis, all right, and blurred vision. All right, great start, especially for the MPTE. You need to definitely have a good understanding of what multiple sclerosis is. Be ready for it. And also understand, this is a little something that you can write down in your notes. Multiple sclerosis is one of those conditions that has a lot of impact on the patient's extraocular muscles, all right, or cranial nerves dealing with the eyes. Multiple sclerosis has a big impact on that, all right? And so it's not surprising to me that Adriana has blurred vision, all right? Now, as we continue down the question, it says, during cranial nerve testing, y'all know what that is. The therapist quickly shines a pen light into the patient's left eye. Let me hold up for a minute right there. Think back to your cranial nerve testing. When you're shining that pen light into the patient's eye, what are we looking for? What should happen? You should be saying to me, well, in the, in the eye that we're shining the light into, we should see pupil constriction. That's normal, right? Okay. So it says during cranial nerve testing, the therapist quickly shines a pen light into the patient's left eye. Now it says the patient's right eye constricts, so the opposite, right? However, the left eye remains dilated. And then the stem says, which of the following is the most likely present? So we got to figure out, like, what is this impairment that is here? Which cranial nerve is impaired? Why is this a problem? That sort of thing, right? So let's just recap before we go into our answers. Again, we shine the light into the left eye. We're finding that the right eye constricts, but the left eye doesn't. This is abnormal. But the question is, why? Why is it abnormal? Now let's go down to the answer choice again. So we got A, left cranial nerve 3 impairment. B, right cranial nerve 2 impairment. C, left cranial nerve 2 impairment. And D is right cranial nerve 3 impairment. All right. So when I think about this, again, I always come back to, well, let me say it this way. Let me say it this way. If I was on the MPTE right now, taking it right this moment, I would not get myself all tripped up and trying to keep this all in my brain right now and try to solve through it. I would actually use my laminate paper right now. I really would. And I would come out to the side. And for those of you who are on the podcast, maybe you're in the gym right now, you're going to have to catch this episode on YouTube. You can go to my channel, PT Hustle, the PT Hustle. It's on YouTube. And you can actually see what I'm drawing. All right. But for those of you here with me live right now, let's draw out an eyeball, all right? And we're going to draw out two of those, all right? So we got two eyeballs, and for those of you listening to me, just, just imagine what I'm drawing out right now. I'm doing a little Pablo Picasso. All right, so we got two eyeballs, and we're looking down at the head right now. Like, we're looking down on the head. Now, here's the deal. For every eye, what I want you to know is that there's two nerves, there's two nerves that you need to be primarily worried about. One is going to be the optic nerve, 
and one is going to be the oculomotor nerve. Now, what I'm going to do is with my left eyeball, I am going to draw those two nerves. All right, let me draw those out really quick. And so this green line that's drawing back is going to be the optic nerve. And then we're going to have a different colored line, and we're going to make that the oculomotor nerve. Right? So there's two nerves that are going to that left eye. Now, I will say this. In order for the eye to constrict, the left eye, it needs to have a functioning left optic nerve, and it needs to have a functioning left oculomotor nerve. It has to have both of them. If it doesn't have both of them, the left eye cannot constrict when you're shining light into it. All right? So here's the deal. Does the left eye constrict in the question, yes or no? You should be saying this to me right now. Does the left eye constrict when we shine light into it, yes or no? The answer is no, it doesn't. So what is potentially the problem? There's two things that could be the problem, right? The optic nerve or the oculomotor nerve. So which one is it? Well, the question says something really interesting. If you can't remember, let me repeat it to you. The question says, during cranial nerve testing, the therapist quickly shines a pen light into the patient's left eye. The patient's right eye constricts. So what does that mean? Well, that means that the left eye did get the signal. The left eye did receive that light, right? And it sent the signal over to the right side, all right? So we know that the left optic nerve is working. It has to be working. Otherwise, the right eye wouldn't have constricted, all right? There has to be a signal that's being transferred over there. What I need you to write in your notes, if you're in the car, you're, you're in the gym, you might want to stop for a minute, write this down, that in order for you to get a signal over to the right eye or to the opposite eye, you have to have a functioning optic nerve. Let me say that again. If you shine a light into the left eye, you have to have a functioning left optic nerve in order for the right eye to constrict. So the question is telling you here that maybe this person has a functioning left optic nerve. It is on point. There's no problem with the left optic nerve. So that cannot be the right answer right now. All right. So if the left optic nerve is working, and we said there's only two reasons why that left optic nerve wouldn't, or the, the, the left eye wouldn't be constricting, then what is the only other reason why it wouldn't be? Remember, there's only two. It's either the left optic nerve or the left, uh, left oculomotor nerve. Which one is it? It has to be the left oculomotor nerve. All I need you to do is tell me what cranial nerve that is. Is that cranial nerve two? Is that cranial nerve three? Which one y'all got? You should be saying to me, Kyle, that is cranial nerve three. So A, which says left cranial nerve three impairment, I like it. It makes sense to me. All right. And so right now I'm going to go ahead and circle A. I like that answer, but let's continue down the line and, and let's see. All right. B says right cranial nerve to impairment. It's really saying right optic nerve impairment. Well, I'm not worried about the right eye. The right eye is constricting like it's supposed to. There's no problem over there. I'm not worried about the right optic nerve at all. Obviously, the problem's wrong with the left eye. So we're not going to select B here because we're not really worried about there being a right problem. We're worried about a left problem. Does that make sense? Are we all on the same page here? All right, so let's look at C. C says left cranial nerve to impairment. What that's saying is left optic nerve impairment. Now, we already said in order for the right eye to constrict, the left eye has to have a functioning optic nerve. Let me say that again. If you shine a light in the left eye, in order for the right eye to constrict, you have to have a functioning optic nerve. Put that in your notes. So obviously we do not have a problem with the left optic nerve. We're going to go ahead and eliminate that answer. And then 
our last answer here, D, it says right cranial nerve three impairment or the right oculomotor nerve. Question to you is, are we worried about the right side right now? Is the right side the problem? Is the right side the one that's showing us the issues? No, we're worried about something on the left side. So D cannot be the right answer. So for every single one of you right now, wherever you are, if you selected A, left cranial nerve three, left oculomotor nerve impairment, you got this question correct. Congratulations. This one is not easy. Let me tell you, this is a very difficult topic when it comes down to the whole pupillary reflexes and all that good stuff. So what I want to do is I want to take an extra moment just to recap on what we just said and give you a little bit better understanding for the actual MPTE. Final answer is A though, y'all. Okay. So there's a couple things I want to say before we jump off this. I want to say that when you shine the light into any eye, we're looking for this thing called direct pupillary reflex. Direct pupillary reflex. And what that really means is that when you shine a light into the eye, that same eye is going to constrict or the pupil of that eye is going to constrict. That's called a direct pupillary reflex. Great. Now, can you tell me what it's called when I shine a light into the left eye and then the, the right eye constricts, the opposite eye? What is that term called? Do we know what that is? You need to know it for the MPTE, baby. It's called consensual pupillary reflex. All right, you got to know both terms. Very, very important. So just as a recap for you all tonight who are with me, you should remember that for every single eye, you are going to have two major nerves that you need to be worried about. One is called the optic nerve. All right. And then you're going to have another one that is going to communicate with that nerve. And can we say what that is? Help me out. Help me out. You should be saying oculomotor nerve. All right, there we go. So we got these two nerves that are running to the left eye. Now, in order for the left eye to constrict, the pupil to constrict, we have both. We have to have a, a functioning optic nerve and a functioning oculomotor nerve. If we don't, we cannot have that good pupil constriction on the left side. That's what I need you to leave with. All right. And so direct pupillary reflex, consensual pupillary reflex, you need to be ready for those on your MPTE. You need to be ready to determine, am I dealing with an optic nerve problem or oculomotor nerve problem? You need to check those out. A great reference to find that information is your O'Sullivan textbook. It'll give you a lot of information about those. All right.